These simple unadorned surroundings form a fitting shrine for our producer's idols. Such liberal statesmen as William Howard Taft, William B. McKinley, and William the Conqueror. The loyalty of his staff is surpassed only by their efficiency. Fortunately, in case of accident, the deep pile of the Persian rugs prevents any injury. Now, isn't that better than having Blue Cross? <laughs> But here he comes now, only 3.30, and already he's back from lunch. A lunch he appears to have had at his favorite lobster house, the Trust on 45th Street. The love of an eccentric is still wearing his lobster bib. Meh, I never give anything back. Here, take the hat. Have it rewaxed. Gladys, you didn't kneel when I passed you. I'm sorry. Out, out, back to your wiretap. Now, what's this? from the Federal Tax Division. Well, they can collect from somebody else this year. I give to the Minutemen. That's enough charity. Of course, even big TV producers have to put up with petty annoyances. Here come two disgruntled writers, Rob Sterling and Reginald Knowles, who have been ill-mannered enough to call when the producer is reading his mail. Yet, kindly as ever, he agrees to see them and talk over their picayune problems. Uh, uh. I'm chicken. Go on, go on. Uh, boss, uh, uh, we were wondering if we could have a half a day off on Sundays. Uh, uh, Reggie and me ain't seen our kids in five years. Silence. If you were doing your job right, you wouldn't have time for such wild-eyed radical ideas. Now look at me. When I was a writer, I worked eight days a week. You're fired. Send them back to William Morris. <laughs> I've had enough troublemakers, Bolsheviks, even worse, liberals. <laughs> and turn in your pencils before you leave. <laughs> that Barry Goldwater gets more pinko every day. <laughs> his dealings with the network executives that the television producer really shows his mettle. He will let absolutely nothing stand in the way of good programs for the American people. Okay, baby, how's it, how's it shake him, kid? <laughs> How about a cigar? Hey, see Aubrey's cigars. <laughs> well, I see you carrying a gun again, Irvy. Well, I never can tell when you're going to meet somebody from the Revenue Service. <laughs> ah, here we are. Don't smoke past the first eight inches. They explode. <laughs> the ball is in your corner. Well, here's the schedule I thought I'd plug for putting on our network next fall. Let's see. Good. <laughs> Seven thirty, aqua smoke. Eight o'clock, seventy-seven Gaza Strip. Eight thirty, the John Birch Folly. Yes, in every prime evening time, one of his shows. How does he do it? Is it his knowledge of show business? His knowledge of public taste? No, it's his knowledge of the most important part of his operation, how to make a payoff. <laughs> Discreet, untraceable, for this producer doesn't pay off in small bills. He pays off in Indian head nickels. <laughs> but that's terrible. That's unethical. That's illegal. No, that's what Jay Ward is really like. <laughs>